The Bend Film Festival is underway once again. We have a chance to talk to Scott Ramsey, who's on the board and a director of selections, as well as Bob Lane, vice president of the board and another director of selections, about this year's festival. Runs through Sunday afternoon, culminating with the best of on Sunday. Just a whole host of every kind of film you can imagine, for kids all the way up to, we even have a, an adult f- film uh, on uh, Friday night uh, at McMinimum's. How many films this year, how does it compare with years past? It's a little over 90 this year. Mm-hmm. I think yeah, that's about 25 20. more than we've shown in the past. Yeah, it year. gave us a lot more diversified programs so that we didn't end up with one kind of running theme. There's really stuff for everybody this year, and we're, we're really pleased with that. For instance, we've got One Piece at a Time. That's a guy that goes all around the world helping with various projects from orphanages in India to water projects in Africa. It's got Desmond Tutu and three or four uh, Nobel laureates. It's got Willie Nelson at the end talking about biodiesel. It's got one called The Rivals about... Children, uh, high school sports. Uh, what else, Scott? We've got. Some we've added animation features. this year. Animation yeah. as a category, which we've never had before. So we have some terrific animation. Some of it coming right out of the Northwest, out of Portland, with a great little short called "The Mouse That Soared." We have Bill Plimpton coming in from New York. He's a two-time Academy Award-nominated animation guy who's done seven or eight feature films. He's going to be lecturing, drawing, handing out drawings to the crowd, and then we're going to screen his feature film, his latest one, and two or three of his shorts. And Georgina Haynes will do uh, her uh, lecture at Regal at 10 a.m. Uh, on Friday also, and she's the puppet master, Does brings her film Coraline, and that's going to be really interesting. We've also got indie kids for the little ones and future filmmakers for the high schoolers. All the local high school kids submitted their films, we made that part of the festival this year. So a significant number of additional films this year. Did that create any challenges, obviously, scheduling? What about facilities? Do we have Ooh. enough? We have we, enough. Yeah, we have enough. In fact, we've added Sisters this year as a venue. We're really pleased to be working with Sisters and extending out the the extended Central Oregon community. We have two theaters down at the Regal in the Old Mill there showing films. We have two theaters at McMenamin's, the Tower downtown, and Sisters Movie House. So a decision was made to extend this into Sisters. It's the Bend Film Festival. You want to extend this to more people in Central Oregon? Is that the reason? Absolutely. That's one of our missions is to get everybody involved in Central Oregon, all walks of life, kids all the way up to seniors. We want to open it up to just everybody. This year, because of the economy, it became more of a grassroots effort. It was a a little bit of a challenging year as far as fundraising goes, but that was a good thing in the end because it forced us to go back to the community, find out how we could all work together, not make money the obstacle, but instead make partnerships. How much money does it cost to put this festival on? Actually, the costs are much less this year because everybody's volunteering. Everybody has stepped up in volunteering. We have very few paid paid positions, and... uh, We've actually lowered our ticket prices to help everybody with this economy. The passes that will get you into all the parties and all the films have come from to down from 275 to 150 dollars. The full film pass is 95, and if you go online, you can buy tickets. I think it's for nine dollars this year, or maybe even less. I think it is nine. Yeah, yeah. and uh, the, it, because of all of the volunteers that we have, this festival wouldn't be possible. And because of the volunteers, I think most people would be very surprised at the operating budget of Ben Film. It's really about maintaining an art artistic platform in Central Oregon. A lot of these films, I would say most of these films, would never show in Central Oregon or within a 150-mile radius of Bend if we didn't have a festival like this to to show them in. And I think it's very important to the community. It really is. We've, we've lost a Cascade Music Festival, and we want to keep this uh, so you got a lot of dedicated people doing everything they can to, to keep it going and it's it's been a real success this year we've got a real bright future ahead and for just the average citizen in Bend to participate in the Bend Film Festival as far as coming and seeing the films well I think it supports obviously the festival and it allows us to continue but it also enriches I think everyone's life to to see these films because they're films that you just don't see in the mainstream and uh, again we have something for the kids with indie kids the little kids and all the way up to the adults and uh, I think it enriches everyone's lives the film industry all over the United States and the world is changing the huge blockbuster films they're investing more and more money into which makes independent film a much more important platform for people you can go out with technology today and you can make a film on very little money which means there are a lot more independent films out there and it's challenging to see them and this venue provides a theater venue for films that otherwise you may never see or you may see four years from now on the independent film channel Scott Ramsey and Bob Lane speaking on behalf of the Bend Film Festival. I'm Dave Adams. Take 5 is a production of 1110 KBND Radio News. Depend on us.